So, it's been quite a long time since I've done a video like this about Pokemon news. Sorry for those of you on my channel who've been waiting for me to talk about things like Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl or Pokemon Legends Arceus and stuff like that. I, I just I didn't get around to doing it and I apologize I will do videos on that eventually. But um, also really weird that I did a double upload today. Also, pardon my voice, I'm suffering from a pretty serious cold right now, but that's not what's important. I wanted to talk about today a little bit about the reveal of the Generation 9 Pokemon games. Pokemon Scarlet version and Pokemon Violet version. So, I found out, actually I was sleeping when the Pokemon Presents actually came out. So I wasn't 100% sure what was going on until a very good friend of mine basically smacked me in the face with it. But, um... So I wanted to give a couple of brief thoughts, opinions, and ideas on what this game, these games might be for the future. So as we all know, from those who've seen the trailer, the region, this is going to be the first Pokemon game that is totally open world. So when I look at the main picture, which I will probably have on screen right now, the first thing I think about is Breath of the Wild made sweet, sweet love to Pokemon Sword and Shield and pop this baby out three, four years later. The design of the artistry and the trees looking great, so no one can complain about the fucking tree like they did in Sword and Shield. This castle in the background with a giant spire with the Master Ball on it and the icy mountain in the background with the rain, rainbow on the front. Oh my god, I fucking love this. So, first of all, the art design alone is absolutely gorgeous. This is going to be the best looking Pokemon game by a mile. But there's been some speculation already about where this game is actually going to be taking place in. Uh, during the actual presentation, uh, there was a, supposedly a picture of, I think it was Brazil or something, or some South American country in the background. I didn't actually see the trailer, I just watched the stuff afterwards. But I believe personally that this might be the first South American Pokemon game. I do think it's a very good chance that this could be either in Spain or in, uh, I don't think India, I've heard that thrown around a, a few times, but I believe that Spain could possibly be the region uh, of origin. We could also have uh, South American countries like Brazil or Argentina to be the, um, mm, sorry, the, uh, the country, the region is based off of. But just from the few images that we've already seen, I can tell right now that this is going to be an amazingly beautiful game. I'm not fully sold though on the character models for the trainers the boy sort of looks like he's from a disney movie and the girl doesn't really look like a girl but aside from that my favorite image which i'm gonna try to throw up on screen right now right there lucario fighting his suian zoroark now with legends Arceus, something that i was really worried about was the new suian forms were they going to be tradable to other generations? Because, first of all, Diamond Pearl and Pla BDSP, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, still do not have trade functionality with Sword and Shield, which really bugs the shit out of me. I'm wondering when they're going to drop that, and I'm hoping that they do it pro pro before the release of the games, which are going to be coming out. Let's be honest, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet the date right now. It's going to be between November 10th and November 22nd. Guaranteed. My biggest bet is going to be on the 12th or the 17th. Those are my bets right now. So anyone who finds out in the comments, comes to this video later and sees that, go ahead, see if I'm wrong. But anyway, the very fact that the Hisuian form is in the game to me might mean the biggest thing I've wanted is, this entire time is the full access of the entire roster of all 900 plus Pokemon in one game. And in an open world Pokemon game, I can absolutely see every single previous Pokemon coming back. If we get every Pokemon back, I'm gonna be so freaking happy, I'm gonna explode. But th th that's kind of a different conversation, but what the, 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 the main thing, because we don't know anything really yet. We just know about like a couple of screenshots. Um, we saw the trailer, we know a few Pokemon and that's it. So, what I want to spend the last bit of this video on is addressing the three Pokemon that we currently know about. Those being, of course, the starter Pokemon, which are shown at the end of one of the trailers. The grass starter, Sprigatito, I believe is how it's pronounced. The fire starter, Fuecoco. And the water starter, Quaxley. So, let me give just some short, quick opinions 
on what these starters are going to be and where they're going to be placed in the Pokemon Mythos. So, Sprigatito, I believe, is going to evolve into a Grass Fairy type. More than likely, it is not going to be quadrupedal. I believe it's going to be a bipedal cat with a floral design um, to exemplify the cuteness factor. Because Sprig Spir Sprigatito, Sprigatito, God, that's going to be so hard to pronounce. I'm not that great with Spanish. I know enough, but I don't know. Like the pronunciation is bad. Plus, my throat is like filled with like needles right now. Hmm. I'm gonna call it for right now by its Japanese name, which is Nyaoho, which or Nyaoha, which is a lot easier for me to pronounce. So I think it's going to be a grass fairy type. I think it's gonna evolve at level 16 and then at level 32. I believe it's gonna be primarily a special attacker with good speed and a decent special defense stat, with a very weak defense stat, average attack, and a low HP stat. So for Fue Coco, if you guys haven't realized this, all of the fire starters up to this point have been based on one of the animals in the Chinese Zodiac. So if you go down the list of the starter Pokemon, we do have the first generation we had Charizard. So Charizard is definitely based on the uh, the dragon of the Chinese Zodiac. The second generation we had Typhlosion, which pre-evolved from Cyndaquil, which is more mouse-like, so we had the rat of the Chinese Zodiac. Torchic was obviously the chicken of the Chinese Zodiac. Chimchar, the monkey, obviously. Tepig was the boar, obviously. Its last form says Emboar in it. Fennekin, although it's a little bit more shaky on this one, is definitely the dog of the uh, actual Chinese Zodiac. Litten, obviously, is the tiger. And then for Generation 8, we had Score Bunny, which is the rabbit. The only animals left in the Chinese Zodiac are the goat, the horse, the ox, and the snake. If we look at Fue Coco's design, it is very, very clear that it is going for a crocodile-like appearance and a reptilian type of Pokemon. I personally think that Fue Coco could evolve into a Fire Dragon type in its final form. It could also be a Fire Steel type, which I think would be very fitting for a crocodile because of their hard armored bodies. I believe that it is going to be primarily a physical attacker with high bulk, low special defense, or low special attack, really good special defense, and average to low speed. I believe it's also going to remain bipedal into its full evolution, although there is a good chance that it could be quadrupedal because it's based on a crocodile. Now, it's going to have to take the place of the snake. Even though it's not a snake, it is still a reptile. Salamander, with its form of Charmander, obviously wasn't a dragon, but Charizard was a dragon, so it's very, very possible that Fue Coco could evolve into a serpent-like Pokemon rather than a crocodile specifically. Moving on to the last one, which is Quaxley, which my, my very good dear friend Savannah is obsessed with because in her own words, if you're watching this, honey, give me bird Pokemon, I take bird Pokemon. I hope she recognizes that because I'm going to send her this video. But Quaxley, in my opinion, is going to be probably one of the most underrated of the starters. Mm. I'm hoping that Quaxley turns out to be a vastly superior Swanna. I have a soft spot on my heart for Swanna. I really like the, the design. I love swans in general. It's got really good attack and special and speed. Almost 100 in both attacking stats, which is really good for a one-stage Pokemon that's pretty much useless outside of that. I'm really hoping that they don't go the water flying type for Quaxley because it is a water duck. I'm hoping that they go something more like water electric. Now, electric might be a silly type of type combo, but when I look at you clear me on this. When you see Quaxley's design, for me, for some reason, the white and yellow of its of its feathers and beak respectfully remind me of lightning for some reason. Maybe I'm just crazy, I don't know, but we only have one water electric type, technically two if you include Rotom Wash, and that's Lantern and Chinchow, which I count as one because it's one evolution set. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm really hoping that Quaxley becomes a water electric type. If it does, I believe it's going to be a very majestic looking bird with very large wings, possibly with yellow tinted feathers with blue tinted on the center of the feather. I believe it's going to evolve somewhat into a large swan like design, but still be a duck. Now, I believe it's going to have uh, decent defenses, decent special and physical and a good speed stat. I believe that Quaxley is going to be the middle ground starter. Similar to how Swampert is in Generation 3, where none of its stats are really super impressive, but it's very well balanced. That's what I'm predicting for Quaxley. 
Now, I believe all three of the starters are not going to evolve in the same manner. I believe that, like I said, I believe that Nyauha or Sprigadito is going to evolve at 17 and 32. I believe Fuecoco is going to be 14 and 36, and Quaxley is going to be 18 and 30, or 36. That's just my personal opinion, because, I don't know, it just seems like Quaxley would evolve into its final form quicker. Because, typically what Game Freak likes to do is they like to make one of the starters the easy mode, one the middle ground, and one the hard mode. And I think that for these... Uh, Sprigadito is going to be the hard mode, Fuecoco is going to be the easy mode, and Quaxley is going to be the normal mode. That's just my personal opinion on that, but I'm going to go ahead and actually end this video right now because I'm about to cough up a fucking storm, but please, you guys, let me know in the comments what you think about the new region, the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet version. I'm definitely going to be doing full Let's Play and a full review on both games when they come out later this November. Let's be honest, it's going to be fucking November, everybody knows that. And uh, as I said, let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Uh, see if there's any other things you want to speculate. Go ahead and let me know. And um, I guess that's going to be it for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been ZDS. Make sure you perform one video at a time. And I will see you guys in the next video.